Hey guys, it's the Friction here, or Tiger Tank One Two. Having to call me, I don't really care. And welcome back to World of Tanks. Today, not in the game, but we are on Wargaming's website where they have just released an article, um, and they have announced something. And this is a very, very big um, headline, and we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna look at it from several different perspectives, and. This is going to be a huge change for Wargaming and for their um, move going forward. So, uh, Wargaming announces decision to leave Russia and Belarus. Now, you may not know, but Wargaming is a Belarusian, uh, Belarusian company. Uh, it's situated in Minsk and it has very, very big, um, smaller development teams in different parts of the world. We have some of them in the United States, where they developed the console version. We have um, in Moscow, we had a development studio in St. Petersburg and in Ukraine, in Kiev. In Kiev, they have over, I think, 700 employees who obviously have been affected by this terrible war that is going on. And Wargaming, I think their stance on the war, they may not have um, announced uh, that they denounced the war itself. Um, because probably that's politically a very dangerous thing to do when you're situated in uh, Russia right now or in Belarus. But they do have uh, said that they are uh, supporting their people, that they're working at Kiev. And um, I think that generally does give us a little bit of an idea what Wargaming's perspective is behind this conflict. There's no help. There is no, there is no benefit for them. Put it like that. So basically, they're going to leave Belarus and Russia. And this is no April Fool's. This came out straight from Wargaming. We have another source as well from Stockwatch. Um, so this is, uh, this is no joke. So over the past weeks, Wargaming has been conducting a strategic review of business operations worldwide. It's a very big company worldwide. It has a lot of studios. The company has decided it will not own or operate any businesses in Russia and Belarus and will leave both countries. Now, this is very, very interesting. We're gonna to get to this afterwards. So basically they're gonna pull out and they're not going to be operating any uh, businesses in Russia and Belarus. Now the question is World of Tanks, the biggest server is in Russia, or yeah, the Russian server is the biggest server World of Tanks. Supposedly they're gonna give this server away because if they are not going to be operating any businesses, they obviously cannot um, be holding that server or, you know, keeping that server, um, or maybe they can keep it up, but I'm not sure how they would do it without earning money. It's a bit weird. Effective March 31st, the company transferred its live games business in Russia and Belarus to local management of Lesta Studio that is no longer affiliated with Wargaming. The company will not profit from this process either today or going forward. Much to the contrary, we expect to suffer substantial losses as a direct result of this decision. Now we're going to talk about this in a bit more in depth, in, in especially talking about Lesta Studio, because that is actually a wargaming studio that is in uh, St. Petersburg, and that is the studio that does develop World of Warship content. So we're going to talk about them in a moment, and we're going to talk about this part right here. No longer affiliated with Wargaming, the company will not profit from this process either going uh, either today or going forward. Much to the contrary, we expect to suffer substantial losses as a direct result of this decision. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is on the one side, certainly um, financial losses, I'd say, but then also a huge loss of talent because they have huge studios in Moscow and in St. Petersburg and in Minsk. And these studios have a lot of experienced developers. Um, so that is a loss of knowledge, of know-how, of expertise. That is the question that we're gonna have later on. What will this mean for us, right? We will be completing an operational transition with all due speed while remaining in full compliance with all laws and ensuring the ongoing safety and support of our employees. During the transition period, the live products uh, products will remain available in Russia and Belarus and will be operated by the new owner. So Alessa Studio is going to take over the wargaming business in Belarus and Russia. So that means World of Warplanes, World of World, uh, World of Tanks, World of Warships, 
um, the Russian servers are going to be handled by different entities. That means uh, it's going to be on, under Leicester Studio. We're going to talk about Leicester Studio in a moment. But it's very interesting because it seems to me that it goes into the similar direction, just like the Chinese server. The Chinese server that we have currently in China is not directly operated by Wargaming. The Chinese server in China is operated by a different company, but the content that is being produced is still coming from Wargaming. But I'm not really sure how it works with the um, finances, like who who earns how much and how much they have to pay wargaming to be able to license the game or you know distribute it over there it's a very different way how they actually sell tanks on the chinese server it's basically who is the biggest wallet is going to be the king of the world uh, everybody else uh, is going to be getting absolutely raped <laughs> i'm sorry it's a yeah okay it's absolutely going to be destroyed by uh players that you know um have tanks that they buy with gold or money outright you can buy the waffenträger of e100 for about 300 bucks and it's crazy it's complete madness over there so wargaming has also started the process of closing its studio in minsk belarus that's the biggest studio they have a lot of people over there we will be providing as much severance and support as possible to our employees affected by the change despite the magnitude of this decision we as company are confident in the future of our business and are committed to delivering quality games to our players so basically they have to release the same statement here on stockwatch and it's very interesting so let's real fast go to wargaming um wargaming real fast here on wikipedia just to show you guys the the size of this company now their headquarters is officially in nicosia in cyprus which obviously is for um tax benefits they don't have to pay as many tax that's why they are in nicosia uh world of uh, war funder is there as well there are other companies so basically that's how everyone is kind of um you know going away from high taxes and basically they have a lot of different studios they have quite a few like you can see the wikipedia page for this is quite extensive because they obviously have grown over the time very very largely so um the question right now is where can we actually see um how many how many studios they have because that was the question that i have right now because i know i remember that the amount of people they have employed in minsk was over a thousand there were several thousand people working in world of tanks i'm oh, sorry about that um and yeah we we unfortunately cannot see but you can see in kiev alone 550 employees right then in moscow you have several hundred employees at least um you have uh in the united states even though they closed the emerville's um studios they still have the seattle studio with 150 uh, employees or developers um then you have uh you know you have the russian one you have Studios, oh, right here, it's right here. You have Big World in Sydney, Australia, which is a part of Wargaming. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, it's the engine that they have. Uh, you have the Persia Studio in Kiev. This is the big one. Um, Wargaming in Paris, in Chicago, Baltimore, Illinois. Uh, like, oh, Chicago, I'm sorry about that. And Baltimore uh, in Minsk, yes, which is obviously the biggest one. Berlin in Copenhagen, in Moscow, in Guildford, uh, so yeah, this this is a massive company by any standards. They make a lot of cash. You can see number of employees, 2020, 1,750. They probably have more by the year 2020, um, 2022, sorry about that. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about some things that I wanted to address real fast. So much to the contrary, we expect to suffer substantial losses as a direct result of this decision. What does this mean? I think they're going to be losing financially because uh, obviously I'm not sure if they're going to be uh, getting as much money from the Leicester studio, um, how that is going to work. But this is going to be a huge change because they'll need to build up new studios if they want to keep up the uh, development of new games. They'll need to switch and transfer all of the knowledge they need to get these guys or girls or you know developers generally speaking into new places into um 
yeah, into different places. Now, I've heard that Wargaming have actually just recently made a deal with uh, Uzbekistan or with, uh, with Uzbekistan, and uh, they're going to be building a new development studio in Uzbekistan. I'm not really sure in uh, which place. It might be the, the capital, but I'm not really sure what the capital is of Uzbekistan, even though I've lived in, <laughs> in Eastern Europe for six years. It doesn't really matter. But yes, so there's going to be a huge, huge change and also keep in mind this is a huge company coming from eastern europe this is a huge company coming from minsk belarus belarus de facto is an authoritar authoritarian regime in europe and if you think about it this is a huge company that is displayed worldwide what do you think the reaction is going to be in Belarus and Russia when they hear that they are going to be cutting ties and leaving um, these places? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you exactly what they're going to think of wargaming in Ru in Russia. They're going to think that they're traitors. They are going to think that these guys are just here, <laughs> just here for bi uh, for business and to make massive amounts of cash, which is the truth. But that they have turned their that they have turned their backs on their Russian and Belarusian brothers and sisters. So that's a pretty huge step because this change is not going to be reversible. If they go away, if they leave these places, they will never be able to return in the same way that they have left right now because I can tell you they will not be welcomed back. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. At least that's what I think is going to be uh, the case because the Russians and the Belarusians right now are thinking that everyone is against them, the entire West, the entire world. And um, we all know, you know, the, the war, this invasion, this is no just war. Um, but they don't think that it is. They, they think it is a just war because of certainly a lot of different news channels and the way that the government has framed everything. But we're not going to get into politics, but this has a huge impact on them. So, yeah, um, well, completing operational transition, um, they have had this under wraps for at least, I think they must have thought about this for at least a month now, maybe even longer, because this doesn't come out of nowhere. So why is Wargaming rushing out of Russia and Belarus, or why is that their, their step? I think because currently um, the future outset for Russia and Belarus is a very grim one, um, at least in terms of financial um, standings for the future. You're cut from everything. You're getting sanctioned by so many places. And for Wargaming, a business that wants to be a part of the ever-growing market of video game and this entertainment industry of video games, they're going to have a very rough time in Russia. So that's why they want to cut their ties, maybe. They don't really explicitly... Um, name any reason but it has to do something with the current political climate it certainly has to do other than that because they are from there which makes it so much more interesting they are actually an entity that came from minsk so if you think about that that is a massive massive thing so moving on um obviously what will this mean for us the world of tanks community the war world of war uh, warship players I think in the immediate, um, I think in the immediate uh, time, I don't think we're gonna feel any changes. But there are a lot of things going to be changing in the future. I'm not sure what the content is going to be like. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to support all three of the games right now when they're turning everything over, when they are starting new, when they have to um, open new development studios and everything. I don't know how they're going to be working. The Leicester studio, as you can see right here, um, also known as Wargaming St. Petersburg, is a Russian development and film production company based in St. Petersburg. Um, from 2011 to 2022, the company was owned by Wargaming. Now, it's Wikipedia. Now, obviously, you have to... Um, you have to look because the sources can be changed. Everyone has access to Wikipedia and can just change things. But... Since they are uh, a studio that was a part of Wargaming, Wargaming have now announced that they have cut all ties to the studio. Now the question is, obviously, if you are a bit of a, a cynic, a cynic uh, if you are cynical, let's call it like that, let's put it like that, you might think that they would still operate together and they just work together, but officially they are no longer to as as seen as one unity, as one entity. 
I can imagine that it might go down like this. Because right now, the way that they are phrasing everything, it's like they're cutting ties completely. And like that means that the um, that basically everything from World of Warships, because they are the ones who have um, developed World of Warships, well, how would they how would they get new new content into that? And what would the the future be of the the Russian uh, World of World World of Tanks and World of Warships um, game? Because basically they would have to be the ones that are kind of developing everything, and wargaming wouldn't be a part of that anymore. So I think it could be if you're cynical about it, they're going to be just pulling out, but they're still a part of it by working with them, but they are no longer the de facto owners so that they are maybe safe from Western sanctions. That could be a case. And they look like the ones that have cut ties and at the same time they can still say, you know, uh, yeah, we don't want to be involved with this and we've cut ties, but at the same time, it's like they're still working together. That could be the part, very cynical, I know, uh, but we have to talk about this. So the one thing that I think is really huge, the change of um, that they're closing the Minsk studio, that is the biggest studio that they have, over a thousand employees. Yeah, that's going to be huge. Uh, that's going to affect us all. I'm not sure what the content will be looking like in the future, but expect that there might be a very, uh, maybe a long drought of content. I'm expecting that there is going to be a, a bit of a, a downtime where we're not going to see a lot of more content because obviously this company is extremely occupied with so many changes right now. It might need it be that we might need to take a step back. Um, they still want to keep on um, providing and uh, as much severance and support as they can to the employees affected by the change. Uh, but they are confident that they want to keep this around and they want to be a part of the future and have a better future. So what is my final thought? This has been a bit, bit of a long video, but I think it's really important that we talk about this because this is a massive change. This is big. This is huge. Doesn't matter if maybe they still work with Leicester Studios or whatever. This is massive. This is a, a lot of uncertainty at once for the players, for the developer, for the uh, publisher, you know, Wargaming itself, for the company, for the countries involved in this, uh, for the players on the Russian server and on the Ukrainian uh, side or the Eastern European side. Yeah, there are a lot of things happening right here and I'm not really sure what is going to happen. I cannot look into the future. I don't really know what we'll be going, what we'll be seeing in the near future. But this is massive. Um, I understand why they want to leave. I understand it fully. Um, it's a very uncertain future if you stay in Russia right now. I think the sanctions will only get worse from now on. Um, there is no way back. Uh, because this war has been started by one person and there's only one way back if this person and the entire government changes in some way or form. Now, I'm obviously not a politician. I'm not here to judge over people and everything. But the decision to leave Russia and Belarus to pull you yourself out of the, the firing line because you're part of... Uh, you just live there, you're part of that community. I can understand that from a business standpoint because you don't know what's going to happen. If you're a business, you're um, obviously there to make money. And if you cannot guarantee earnings and winnings and uh, profit or something like that for the near future, you're in a very, very, you're in very dangerous waters. Um, so generally speaking, I understand why they're doing it coming, it, it, but still you can see I'm a bit, I'm a, I'm all over the place right now, um, because these news are really big in the end, it, it seems to appear out of nowhere. Um, I haven't expected this. I haven't known. We don't know what the effects on this war are directly on war gaming, but it, they must be big else they wouldn't do something like this because it's it's not like they are saying they are going to open new um development studios and then they're, they're that they're going to be shifting things around no they're really announcing that they're completely leaving that's a big step that's basically a final decision so this is a very big thing we are aren't really sure what's going to be happening and there's a lot of uncertainty coming towards us 
Hopefully everything works out. I still love World of Tanks, <laughs> obviously. And I don't want it to go down like this. I don't want it to uh, disappear because of um, political reasons and everything. Um, but obviously, you know, the studio needs to make a decision. And if they deem this decision to be the right one, well, in the end, uh, we cannot affect it at all. And we can only see what's going to happen. Very interesting news. Hopefully you guys um, have gotten something out of this little report that I've made. Um, I know it's very sudden. Tell me what you think. This is just the very first, uh, you know, impressions that I have. Now, I can be wrong. This could all be uh, like a, a wrong communique. Um, this could be, I don't know, this, this could be like released by one person, but I don't think it's wrong. It's officially on their website, so I don't think it's an April Fool's joke. This is a, a very, very real looking thing. And um, I think you, you guys probably have a lot of different opinions. As always, put them in the comment section below and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, have a good one.